Hi yeah, everybody, it's, uh, it's Jay here from Bullhorn. Thank you uh, very much for joining our webinar. Um, just a few housekeeping rules um, that we wanted to go through um, as we'll be uh, beginning shortly. Um, everyone's going to be muted. We are going to be recording the session as well, so if you do have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to ask them in the, the chat the panel. You can find that kind of at the bottom of the screen um, as well. So I guess uh, just to kick off, I wanted to introduce myself as well as the wider Bullhorn team who's going to be leading the webinar today. So you've got myself, Jay Roberts. I'm an account exec here at Bullhorn. Really, it's my role and remit to help businesses understand automation as well as Bullhorn as well and how that's combating some of the industry problems that we're, we're facing right now. We've then got my colleague, Eric. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Mativ. I'm part of the sales and strategy team here at Bullhorn looking after the automation and AI. Uh, side of the business. Big thanks to Jay for inviting me. I'm very excited about joining this session and discussing the top five automations with you guys and answering any questions that I can. Hi, Hi everyone. And then we've got Lee sorry. as well. Sorry, Jay. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee. I'm a senior solution consultant at Bullhorn. I've been in the recruitment industry for about 10 years. I've worked for about the last six of those helping customers to implement Bullhorn and the associated products. So looking forward to showing you some of the stuff we can do with Bullhorn automation today. And before we jump into demo, we kind of wanted to talk about automation and the evolution of automation in the recruitment industry. You can probably see on screen here that in 2018, there was only 14 million points of data, points of entry that are being automated. At the back end of 2021, we're now looking close to 600 million. So that data is kind of indicating that recruitment is adopting automation. Um, and as we move on to, to the next slide here, we then look at actually what part of the evolution are we on as an industry? Are we innovators? Are we early adopters? We think we're here as part of the industry. So we're not even at the peak of automation just yet. So some of the things we'll be covering today is really around how we're gonna reach that peak and how we're gonna deliver a, a better client and candidate experience. And just before we hand it over to Lee, who will run us through the five automations, I want to make sure that for everyone on the call today who doesn't have experience with automation just yet, we have the same level of understanding, the same mindset when it comes to automation and recruitment. There are really three key areas of focus that business leaders should be thinking about when it comes to automation, starting with productivity, that's the admin side. Think about all the unproductive, low value tasks that a consultant needs to go through every day, right? Things like checking emails, updating fields or statuses on records, adding notes against those profiles, or maybe it could be other things like creating tasks and reminders for themselves to perform something on a later date, right? So the question here is, how can you take all that effort away from your consultants, automate it in the background, so you can give them back that valuable time that they can spend on more meaningful things, like more meaningful interactions with more clients, more candidates, essentially generate more opportunities for that new business. And from an experience standpoint, how can I provide the best experience for my candidates and clients? Well, it's about communication, right? It's about consistently engaging with your target audience, doing so at the right time with no gaps in that communication. We could be talking about advanced marketing campaigns where you're pushing out HTML rich content to your candidates and clients, or we, just, or we could be talking about just engaging with your candidates proactively as they're progressing that recruitment journey, like acknowledging their application, notifying them as they've progressed further, interview confirmations and reminders via email or text message as that interview date approaches. Or even after that placement is made, provide a great post-placement aftercare that is very often forgotten by the consultants by engaging with the candidates if they're after them being placed, providing that experience that you want to be associated with your brand. And the data health is probably and arguably the most important area of focus for you in order for your team to be most productive and for you to provide the best experience, the data that you work with needs to be clean and actionable, right? So how can you get your data cleaned and ensure it stays clean as you continue to grow your business so you can transform your ATS into a reliable source of truth and into the first point of reference for your consultants whenever they do get that new job in rather than having to rely on external sources and increasing your talent acquisition costs to get candidates who are already most likely sitting in your system they just need their data to be refreshed. So these three areas of focus are also the three core pillars that we've built book on automation around. We're gonna to touch on each of these in a little bit more detail throughout the demo, but if you have any questions already, start asking them in the Q&A and start thinking about the challenges that you're currently facing from a productivity experience and data health side as well. So before I hand it over to Lee, this is the last slide that I'll go through. It's the logic behind every automation. It's, it works on the basis of if this, then that. This being the trigger, think of any event that might have happened on the Bullhorn system or of the back of a Bullhorn automation, then that being all the actions that will follow on to take in the background with Bullhorn automation. And with that being said, Lee, over to you. 
Thanks, Eric. So we're going to show you five automations today with immediate impact. I'm going to take you through these one by one. So we're going to start with an automation all about engaging inactive candidates, because we found that if you can bring an inactive candidate through an engagement workflow, this can lead up to a 76% increase in placements. So if I go into Bullhorn Automation here, you'll see that we've got a list here that if this that Eric spoke about, which is inactive candidates. So we're bringing in any candidate here where they've not had any submission in the last 24 months, or they've not had a note in the last six months. That is no communication with them, no, no time we've put a note against their record. And what are we gonna do with these people? Well, we're gonna bring these candidates through an engagement workflow, which will start with a email that we'll send to them, which will show them a newsletter style HTML email. Then after a couple of weeks, we're gonna send them a more personalized email that feels as if it's come from a human being, from a recruiter. And then after four weeks from then, we're gonna send them a survey and that survey will be an opportunity for us to, to get some more information about them. At any point, if they interact with us through this, we can add a note against them and then that will take them out of the automation. But if they don't do that, at the end of the two weeks, um, after a period of four weeks and then two weeks, we will update their candidate status to be archived and they'll therefore be marked as archived in our Bullhorn system. From a candidate perspective, they will get an email that feels a little bit like this to their, their inbox, where they can see content such as our hot technology jobs, some of the jobs that we have. They can see a picture of the recruiter that owns them in the system, so they can get a bit of a personal touch there. And then they could also follow this link, go and view our open jobs that we have on our website. And just to add on to that, Lee, um... One of the biggest challenges that recruitment businesses are going to face this year is going to be talent shortage. And one of the main priorities is going to be re-engaging with the candidates who you already have in your system and updating their details, right, to decrease your talent acquisition costs. So this is a great first step that you guys can take from a strategic point of view, because you can't just reach out to candidates you may have not spoken to in the last couple of years, right? You need to warm up that relationship. And by creating a campaign that will proactively engage with those candidates on a recurring basis will allow you to bring that engagement back to life. And as these candidates are starting to engage, engage with your content by the value that you bring into them, you're going to start to take that relationship to a different step where you can start asking them to update their profiles and self-serve in a way, which is something we'll explore in a few minutes as well. Great. Thanks, Eric. So... We're going to now take that to the next stage and look at how we can further engage with these candidates who maybe have visited our website and we want to send them an automated follow-up once they've gone on the website. So if I then come back to Herefish, if I remember where I was, I've got this situation where the candidate was on our website and they were looking at jobs and they were potentially looking at some of the, the roles that we have advertised here. What I can then do is I can then set up a bullhorn automation that reacts to them actually visiting the website. So here, the trigger point that if this is actually that they've had a job view, they've gone on a page on our website where the URL contains jobs. And we can set this up in your own settings in terms of you know, what, what, what it is that, that they actually go and visit on the website and how that triggers. But in this particular instance, it's that they've gone on a page in the last seven days, which is a jobs page. And what we're gonna do there is we're then gonna send a notification to the candidate owner telling that person, the recruiter, that, that, that the candidate has visited and looked at that job. And that will look a little bit like this. I'll get an in, a notification to my email inbox, which says that Sarah Smith has viewed one of my jobs. And then if I want to go and view her in Bullhorn, I can follow that link there. But in addition, as Sarah starts to open our emails or visit our job pages and just interact with all the automations that we brought her in, we'll start to get more information on the Bullhorn Automation tab that we have in her Bullhorn record in, in our system. And we can see here that we start to get this score. And this score will be based on how many times she's interacted with the stuff we've sent her and can also be triggered by visits on the page based on the settings you put in. And we can really get a sense then of how actively she's engaging with our brand and how actively she might be looking for a new position. Yeah, thanks, Lee. I think, I think the most common question to ask yourself when, when looking at this sort of automation is, how many candidates do you think are interacting with your branding, with your website, that are going to potentially fall off? The answer is around 50%. So if we look at 
100 candidates interact with your, your website daily, about 50 of those are going to interact with you whatsoever. So we're then using automation, as I think Eric said a moment ago, this war on talent to actually start to warm up um, the, the consultant's pipeline to give them a bit of knowledge, a bit of information and data to then go and speak to that consultant and actually understand why they didn't interact with you in the first place. Great, thanks Jay. So we're now gonna to go to our third automation, which is all about that key thing that Eric mentioned earlier, which is data cleansing, using automations to update, maintain and populate data in the CRM. So what I'm gonna show you here is an automation that is based on a list of candidates where we don't have any submissions or any notes against them in, in the system at all. And in addition to that, we also perhaps missing key information such as their phone number or their position title. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna send them a survey, which will then land in their inbox. And the experience for the candidate is this. Sarah gets an email from Acme Recruiting, which says, we'd like to have a chat, but we need you to take this survey. She then follows the survey and it takes her back to that website where we can ask questions such as, what is her current job role? I'm gonna just put in sales. And what is the best number to reach her on? Now, when she populates this, it will then update her candidate record automatically in Bullhorn. And then finally, she can then update her CV, provide an updated CV. Going back into Bullhorn automation, we can then really build out this process and make it a little bit more complex by using something called branching. So if Sarah responds to that survey and we have the updated details, that's fantastic. We'll then update her status to be active. If she doesn't, we'll wait a little while and then send a follow-up. And then finally, at that stage, if she then responds to the follow-up, we will make her active as before. But if she doesn't, we can both set her candidate status to archived, but also add it to a hot list where we can mark her for deletion. Just a few things that are worthwhile discussing when it comes to data-driven automations. So this was a great example of how we leveraged the first automation that we saw to start re-engaging with those candidates, bring that relationship back to life. Now that they've engaged with us and they started clicking on that, some of our content, viewing job, that all brings up the engagement score as Lee told us. And this can be additional criteria that you guys can add as part of your if this list build so that you can include the candidates who have warmed up to you into the data cleansing exercise. Now, there are a lot of different things that we can do with data, with data automation. I'm gonna add a few of those as well. We already saw that we can set statuses and update fields based on those data automations, we can clear any information that is no longer relevant, but you can also get that up to the information by leveraging the service as we saw, get that up to the email address, that phone number. You can ask your candidates to self-categorize themselves and employment preferences. And even the CV as Lee showed us can parse back into the record and update it in the background. So your consultants don't have to worry about that. I think we, we had one of those questions already, but when it comes to GDPR, you can actually leverage automation to include GDPR related questions in those surveys and have those flow back into the system and update the records accordingly. So whoever revokes their consent, that could flow back into the Bullhorn system and it could add them to a tear sheet or a hot list as Lee mentioned himself, where you can make the business decision as to do you need to keep them in the record? Do you want to anonymize them? Do you want to delete them? But strategically what you're doing here is for those candidates who engage with you, you're activating their profiles and now your consultants have actionable insight and actionable data to work with. But for those that continue to ignore your engagement, that's where you can make the decision to clear them away from your ATS or mark them under a different status. So your consultants have a clean and accurate ATS to work with and they can rely on it more than having to rely on external sources and increasing your talent acquisition costs. And that's what it's all about, transforming your ATS into a reliable source of truth for your team. Great. Thanks, Eric. So we're going to go on to our fourth automation now. And this is a bit different because this actually triggers off a, um, a submission or in this case, an application. So what we have here, if I look again at the if this that Eric mentioned earlier, we're actually bringing submission statuses in here, submissions into this automation that have a status of web response in the last seven days. So what does that mean? That's anyone who's applied via our website or maybe applied via an integrated job board that we have with the Bullhorn system. And this one's really nice and simple. All we're gonna do here is we're going to respond to that submission with an automated email that thanks them for sending their details across. And then we're also gonna use 
text. So this integrates with SMS and we're going to send them a text message to their mobile, obviously, where there'll also be a survey which they can fill in and then they can access our website via their mobile and start to answer some questions. Now we have clients that have really taken this very far and have started to then branch like we showed you before, different paths down the automation, depending on the response that the, the candidate gives to the text message. And with that, you can kind of create a bit of a, a, a chat um, experience for the candidate via text. So this is some, another way you can communicate with your candidates using the text message in addition to email. Yeah, thanks, Kenley. I think this one is probably the most important one when it comes to branding. Uh, the amount of times that I've seen on LinkedIn um, almost uh, a candidate bashing a recruitment agency because nobody's got back to them because the recruitment agency has been inundated with applications. And naturally, due to, I guess, human bandwidth, time of the day, they haven't been able to reply to everyone. So this more is around tailoring and branding and making sure that that candidate is getting the experience as soon as they interact with the business. And again, this can be completely figured towards whether it's email, whether it's text, and actually taking them down a route and a path to make them feel, um, I guess, appreciated for, for that initial outreach to your business. Just a couple of things that I would like to add here, Lee, before we, we jump over. Um, for those of you who don't know, we hold an, an annual survey called the GRID survey. This is where we ask a bunch of questions to business leaders in, in the industry about their thoughts on challenges and priority for the next year. And one very interesting piece of feedback that we got is that every second candidate drops out of the process because they either find that the engagement is too slow or they're not being engaged with at all by the recruitment company. So this is an excellent way to fix that. And with the text message that Lee showed us and the survey that we explored earlier, there's another great strategic approach that you guys can take here, which depends very much on your business model as well. But think about knockout questions. Depending on the type of job that you work in, the industry that you specialize in, there might be some very generic questions that you need to ask the candidates so you can qualify them on whether they're going to progress further in that stage or not. You can actually add the survey as part of that acknowledgement email and ask that candidate to, ask those, to answer those few questions. And depending on the answer, you can either progress them further to a next status or you can automatically reject them in that submission as well. And what this essentially does is it immediately notifies that candidate they've been unsuccessful in the role, but you can strategically send them another email, maybe redirecting them back to the job portal so they can reapply for another job they might be a better fit for. You're essentially providing consistent engagement with your candidates, regardless on the outcome. And that's the, the communication strategy that you want to be connected with your brand. Great, thanks, Eric, thanks, Jay. So final automation now, for the immediate impact. Um, and this one's a bit different, nice and simple. We, we've done a, a lot that uh, related to candidates and to applications, but we're now gonna show you one that you can use for your, 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 your contacts, your sales leads. So in this instance, we are having an automation here that is based on a follow-up for a cold call that we've logged in the system against one of our sales contacts. So if I've in the last day sent uh, logged a prospect call or a cold call, it could also be left message against one of these contacts in my system that will bring that contact into this automation. And then after an hour, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send them an email following up from earlier, um, acknowledging that we, we had a call or that I left a message and uh, giving my contact details. And then the crucial bit, after three days, a task will be added for me, the recruiter, that reminds me to follow up on this good conversation I had earlier in the week. I used to do a lot of cold calling when I was a recruiter, and this is something that I, I always forgot to do, that second round of follow-ups after you've done that good initial round of business development. We, we do that, the automation ends, and we have uh, ensured that we, we're speaking to those people again after that good initial call. Thanks, Lee. And I think that everyone that has been in a sales role can relate quite well to this, right? You are calling tens, if not sometimes hundreds of people every day, and you have so many people to follow up with, and you're spinning so many plates that you just end up forgetting, or you don't have the time to do that. With this very simple automation, you're empowering your consultants by either taking care of the follow-up process for them with automation, or you're proactively notifying them and creating a task for them to ensure they are following up at the right time with the right person. Um, I'm going to quote one of our customers. They gave us a really interesting case study and a success story here. They implemented a similar automation that was designed for every net new uh, sales lead that was added on the Bullhorn system where a consultant wasn't enabled to engage with that prospect on the first try. So those prospects were added to an automation. 
that was designed to start following up with them via email. By the end of month one, the Connexus group resulted with a 97% success rate in showing some form of engagement with those emails by the prospect. So start thinking about the challenges that you're facing from a productivity and prospecting point of view and how automation can help you fill those gaps. Yeah, and I think I think just to cap off this this lunch and learn, we wanted to give you a bit of an idea really around experience and actually the investment that um, that you're going to get really from from automation. So some of these numbers are very average, so they may be completely different for you. They may be exactly kind of around like average recruiter targets, but on average, we're looking at recruitment automation is saving roughly twelve point seven five hours per person per week, which is helped translate all the way through to around sixty grand back to the recruiter's top line. And the whole concept of automation is to remove that busy work, that low value mundane tasks that the consultant shouldn't be have to do, um, have to do anymore. And actually then start to focus on the high value stuff, such as building relationships um, and generating revenue from, from there on moving forwards. Um, I think that that's the end. We have a, a few um, Q and A to go through. So if I fire the questions and answers, I'm sure one of us three will, will answer it. But just before I do, if you're obviously interested in learning more around the bullhorn automation or, or just generally speaking around the capabilities of automation, um, you can see my email here on the screen, um, as well as my, my mobile number. Or if you already have a relationship with your account manager, please feel free to, to reach out from them. So um, I'm, I'm just going to fire out the Q&A really quickly, but we've got a question, uh, a question from Jason. I think this would probably come to you, Lee, or even you, Eric, but seeing who's gone on your website, does it work with any website? Did you want me to take that one? Yeah, you, you go ahead, Eric. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, Jason, great question. Um, Bullhorn automation or Hearfish, by the way, guys, we've, we've gone through a brand refresh. So if you hear Hearfish every now and then, we are talking about Bullhorn automation. It is the same thing. Um, it does integrate with your website. So when you go through the implementation process, there, there's a little bit of a line of script that you add to your website so that every time a member of your target audience, regardless of whether it's a candidate or a client contact, engages with that content and is redirected on your website, will track their activity after they've been redirected there. It doesn't work with every website, just the ones that have been integrated with your Bullhorn automation. So if you are multi-brand, there are uh, strategic approaches that we can take there, but it's only with the websites that you have integrated with Bullhorn automation. Um, we've then got a question from Alec, uh, and that's, what do you mean by every second candidate that drops out? <laughs> yeah, so what we essentially meant there is that from a candidate experience, and candidate experience is going to be key this year, right, with, with, the, with the talent shortage and everything, 50% of candidates drop off from the process because they either find that they're completely disengaged by their recruiter, or the engagement is too slow, or the process is too tedious. So applying automation to your strategy, your communication strategy to improve on that experience, it's a great way to reduce you falling under the same bracket. This is part of the grid survey, by the way. Um, we have our marketing team here as well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is coming out in February. So you can have a, a read of that. It's very interesting. And I recommend everyone on this call to, to go and check out the grid survey as soon as it's out. Thank you. Um, does Hairfish have a scoring mechanism for clients? I so yeah, so I'll, I'll take that one. The what, what I showed you earlier, that tab that will work for candidates and contacts. Great, and one you. one, um, one thing there... to add to that, Jay. Sorry, um, because I don't think we we flagged it earlier. The engagement score, just so you guys know, that becomes searchable criteria as well. So whenever you get a new job in and you start searching for candidates, you can actually apply the engagement score as to which of these candidates that are great fit for the job are actually engaging back with my brand. So this can be an additional criteria you can apply whenever you are looking for that top talent. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Lee. Um, is there analytics behind the automations? Yeah, that there is. There's a um, an analytics section of Bullhorn Automation, which will show you um, overall information on the the number of click throughs, um, email uh, success rates, etc. It'll also show you things like NPS scores. So if you're using NPS through that, something we haven't really discussed today, which is getting a, a net promoter score at the end of maybe like a placement or something, it will show you how well you're doing against that. Um, and it will also give you an overall estimate of the, the, the ROI based on the amount of time that you've actually saved um, based on how many automations you've run in a period. Thanks, Eric. 
yeah, so the, there are three types of metrics. You have the dashboards, as Lee mentioned. You also have automation-specific metrics and survey metrics as well. So if you want to learn more, we're more than happy to show you in a dedicated demo, but we do have the analytics. Thank you. Great. Uh, another question. We are a multi-brand and multi-website. Would the website tracker work for us? Um, yep, Charlotte, I, I saw your question. That's a very good question. It, it can work for you as well. Um, I would recommend here, if you are a Bookon customer, connect with your account manager or reach out to Jay and we'll book you in for a call with a dedicated solution consultants like Lee and we can have a conversation around your current business structure and how automation can help. Thank you. Uh, another one that's just come in. Uh, how easy is it to set up these automations? i.e. who does the work, Herefish or us? How long would it take to set up an automation? I'm gonna start with the first bit, but Lee, you can, you can show the other side of things. So Abigail, very good question. Um, there, there are two answers to that. First, in your initial journey at the start of your um, here official book and automation journey, you will go through an implementation, which will include training, training you up on them, on the best practices when it comes to automation. Now, when it comes to creating them, there are two ways to do that. And Lee is gonna share his screen real quick and, and show you the different approaches that you can take. Yeah, so I think it, it, it's a really good point. How, how do you get to the point where I've shown today where we, we've got a, a number of automations working? And, and as Eric said, we'll, you know, you, you'll, do, you'll do an implementation process where you set them up. You have the ability to do that yourself. I think it's a really good point to make that nearly all of the automations that I've made today for the purposes of this session have been made using our preset templates that we have in the system from, from day one. So what you, you'll see here is when I go to create a new automation, I, I can create a blank one from scratch, maybe if I'm a bit more comfortable, but I also have, um, I think it's, it's something in the 30s, about 36 or so um, preset um, automations here related to pre-hire, to candidates, to submissions, to post-hire. Um, we've got some redeployment ones here. We've got some GDPR ones, but they're all really kind of immediate impact automations. All of the ones that I've shown you today were, were based off these templates and I maybe made some changes to them for today um, but that they're really good for kind of getting you set up and started straight away and we're always adding to these as well we're, when we're seeing best practice and we're seeing things in the market that people want we'll then we'll then add to the number of these thank you um, as a volcanic user with bullhorn um, how long would it sorry that, that question is slightly backward how, how long would it take to uh, to integrate yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I would say that depends very much on, on your structure, the size of your database, um, and the strategy that you want to take when it comes to automation. I would recommend we book a call, Jay, either with yourself or with your account manager, if you're, you said that you're already a Bohon customer, and we can evaluate how long it will take to get you set up. Thank you. Um, we've then got a, a question from Jason. Um, I guess the elephant in the room here, how much does it cost? Um, look, there's, there's many different ways of, of modeling the commercials here. Um, it depends on a number of different factors, such as the size of the business, um, potential complexity of, of, um, of implementation, many different things, but we'll be completely transparent. Um, if you want to email me or your account manager after, after this session, we're more than happy to obviously cover the commercials here once we get a kind of a base layer understanding. Uh, how is the pricing structured? Uh, again, yeah, similar sort of answer. We'll make sure that if you get in touch with your, you know, your Bullhorn rep or your Bullhorn account manager, um, they'll give you the relevant uh, commercials. Uh, sorry, there, there was a couple more. So I think we've got, okay, so cool. So if a candidate replies to an email rather than clicks on a link, can this engagement be recorded? Um, that's a good question. So the short answer to this would be no. Um, we can track the activity of the back of an email, such as open rates, click rates, and activity after um, a click has happened. So if that person has been redirected on your website and they view a specific page, they open a job, even if they don't apply, that activity is all tracked on Bookman Automation and is visible in the candidate engagement tab that Lee showed us. Replies are not tracked by Bookman Automation because the emails that you send out through Bookman Automation are sent out through a different, um, how should I position this in, in a simple way? They're, they're sent out through a different provider, if you will, white labeled with your email, of course, but the replies go back directly to your inbox and we don't have a way to see into the response rates as well. 
Thank you. Uh, and I think the last one, this is from Abigail. Um, if we use Herefish for interview reminders or post placement applicator, and we set up the placement or interview date and the date changes, will the automation recognize that? Yep, I'll take that as well. So any update that you make on the record, when you build your, your list criteria, that if this part of the automation, that list refreshes on a reoccurring basis and it always looks for any changes in those records to ensure whether they still qualify to be part of that list or not. So if you make an update on the records that are part of that target list, then that change would reflect. Bookrun automation is consistently syncing with your ATS, so any changes that you will make will reflect on the automation as well. So the short answer would be yes. Great. Um, I think we're at time now. So everyone who's obviously joined the, the session today, thank you very much for putting the time in the diary. It's, um, it's always appreciated. And I know how everyone is, um, is very, very busy at the, at the moment. But again, you know, just to reiterate, if, if there is any further questions, please feel free to you know, reach out to myself um, or your account manager, and we'll make sure that we'll, um, we'll answer those questions there. Um, and whoever it, NKB is, you're welcome. Um, enjoy the, the, rest of, the rest of the afternoon. Take care and bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.